coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. We said life is made up of moments. This is one moment. Another moment is coming, another moment. And the question is, do you recognize? Do you ignore? Do you ignite? Do you sustain? Mm. It's good. When the opposition good. comes, do you go through? Do you learn any lessons from it? That's the whole idea of God, always having moments for you. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh Dew, Pastor Shola Kingwale is on set with us again yeah. and we're going to be co continuing our message series Seizing the, the moment. moment. And this is part, part five. five of this message series. Yes. Part five. So we'll kick it off immediately from there. Yes. Seizing the moment. We have said that the word seizing means to take hold of suddenly and forcibly. Take forcible possession of. Moment mm -hmm. refers to a point in time. A time so short that it may be considered as a point. A very short time. An infinitesimal change in a varying quantity a stage or a turning point mm -hmm. and then we've made some points under this message some powerful so statements powerful yeah. statements mm. which have uh, given some direction to what we're saying the first thing we've said is that a moment can be ignored or it can be ignited mm -hmm. and we looked at the example of the woman who gave her two mites what is popularly known as the widow's mites mm -hmm. as uh, an example of this second point is that when you take a decision to set a moment on fire, you often have no clue how big a fire you just started. And we looked at the lovely example of another woman, the Shunammite woman and Elisha, who just by one singular act triggered a series of, state of scenes and stages of supernatural intervention for the next number of years in her life. Mm -hmm. And then number three, sometimes you could be sitting on an opportunity of a lifetime all it takes is a trigger in a moment and your eyes are open to it and we've been looking at the example of Martha uh, who Jesus visited uh, in their house and we've looked at some things about this and we'll just uh, continue with maybe, this thought. Maybe we'll just read Luke 10 again. Luke chapter 10. I think it was from 10, 38 I from believe. From 38 to 40. Let me read that again. 42. 38 to, to 42. To 42. Mm. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Now it happened as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Mm. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But mm. Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, mm. do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone, mm. therefore, te therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. And so we looked at the thing about Martha here, and we saw that Ma you could be a person like Martha, a nice person, Ma Martha was nice, but she almost missed an opportunity and she almost refused to ignite a strategic moment in her 
life. And she we, was distracted. Because she was distracted. And that was the reason why she initially almost failed. She initially failed mm. to seize that mo moment before Jesus put her right on track. And then we mm. talked about activities and responsibilities. And we said sometimes some of the most dedicated members and workers, mm -hmm. even in church, Christians, they about Martha was serving the Lord, but she was distracted mm -hmm. with much serving. So what we want to take up, pick up on now to look at is what is the solution to legitimate distractions? Mm -hmm. What is the solution? And the solution to legitimate distractions lies in proper prioritizing. The solution to legitimate distractions lies in proper prioritizing like we said proper, the prioritizing. proper prioritizing the problem was not with Martha's cooking the problem was the timing of it in fact on another occasion this could have been good in fact Jesus healed Peter Peter's mother-in-law and as she got, got up, up she went to <laughs> she went to serve him to minister yeah. same word yeah and like to, we said the Shilamite woman was exactly, hospitable as exactly well so, so yeah. God absolutely has no problem with that but one of the most important things a child of God needs to learn is divine timing. Mm -hmm. Because God has scheduled things at, at particular times and you need to be sensitive mm -hmm. to know those times so that you can plug into them. And that's very important because for some people, they've been serving God and this happens when you're distracted and you don't know how to keep to the proper time. You keep on serving God, keep on serving God and you use that service as a trophy. Mm -hmm. And you get to the point where, child of God, you get so, you serve God that you don't get, you don't even know the God, the God you're serving. You're serving. Wow. You can't, well, <laughs> <laughs> you can't recognize his voice. Yeah. You're serving God, and uh, even I mean, even for us as ministers, we always need to check. We always need to check this. I believe oh, every sure. minister, one time or the other, must have had to have a wake up call. I know I've had to do that. You just get on busy, busy, busy as a bumblebee, serving God. <laughs> up, you're serving God. You're serving God, and after a while, the flesh comes in because there is no spirit, there is no life, there is no divine energy being infused into you. So you wear out. You burn you out. Wear out, you get burnt out, and then you, you know you burn out and all of that. Proverbs 4 20 to 22. It says, My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, do not let them depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and they are health to all their flesh. So he talks about giving attention to God's word. Give attention to his written word, to his spoken word, where the word is being preached and taught. That's what, what Jesus was making Martha to see. And when you do that, you get accustomed to his voice. Because remember, it's a tragedy to serve a God whose voice you no longer, you no longer know. Yeah, God rewards service and faithfulness. But the major things God, even if God is going to reward your faithfulness, he's often going to give you a word. He's often going to give you direction. He wants your fellowship. He wants your fellowship. He wants you. you. He wants you everything. more than what you can do. Lovely. Mm -hmm. More than what you can do for him. Mm -hmm. John 10, uh, 4 and 5 and verse 27. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him, from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. And in verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So child of God, don't let the activities and responsibilities become an encumbrance in your life. No responsibility and activity you have for the work of the ministry should distract you from hearing his words, should distract you from spending time with him. In fact, that posture of Mary sitting at his feet, it talks about humility, teachableness, even talks about the fact that value she, of his word. Value, exactly. Value she of valued his, his, his word. word. And she was ready to lay aside every because when you sit down, I mean when you sit down, that means you are ready to, like Proverbs says, to give attention and incline. Yeah, yeah. Because that word incline means to bend. bend so that posture she took was already a submissive and there's something I'm about to receive from this man that's going to change. And like you said, life. Martha was there before. She was there. But she got up to she serve. She got up. And that picture is, I mean, so lovely as you brought that out because it, it, that's the position of many Christians. They start with the word, but then they get busy, busy serving God. I mean, think about that. Serving God, and then they don't know his voice 
and then create, and that's why it now becomes religion. And you hear people say things like, I don't want to be a Christian. There is religion in Christianity. Unfortunately, it's these sorry examples that give that kind of wrong reference. Remember the example we were talking about before we started shooting? Yes. Of um, <laughs> how I came, no, I, I like to say it's not a luxury to, <laughs> to hear, hear from, from God. Yeah. That, that statement didn't come anyhow. <laughs> I learned it the hard, right, the hard way. Right. You're reminding me of a story I once told. Of yes. Once when I was, I was trusting God for something. You were trusting God for something. And, and I was pray, out time, time to pray. To pray. Yeah. And then the Lord told me to write a check. Mm. And I never have a problem writing a check or sowing a seed. That's good for me to do. But I said to him, when I finish praying. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so silly telling yeah. the story. Right. When I finish praying, I will write the check. And I kept praying. And write the check, like write it now, because <laughs> God knew the matter was urgent yeah, right. for the person who was going to get the, the money. Right. Yeah, I heard you, Lord. I will write the check. I'm agreed to do it. But this is my prayer time. I'm <laughs> talking to you. When I, when I, it's you I'm praying to. <laughs> At some point, God had to ask me, who are you praying to? Wow. Selah. Selah. <laughs> who, so I'm praying to God. God has told me something to do. And I think, yeah, I, I'm not in disobedience. I'll do it. Yeah. But let me finish praying. And then I'll do it. You see, you see how you, mm. you can miss yes. God and miss timing? That was time for me to say, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. shut down <laughs> and write the check. And begin to worship and praise him for direction. Mm. He had to ask me, so who are you praying to? Mm. The person you're praying to is telling you. And prayer is communication. It's communication. <laughs> and, I, and I agreed to do it. But I went to him at one time. Right. When I was done right. praying to him. Right. Done that, was a, mm. <laughs> that was a moment he was yeah. asking you to. Yeah. To trigger. And thank God he slapped me out of it. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong in being nice, hospitable, busy, and committed in all the things you do, but it's all about proper prioritizing. Yeah. And if Mary and Martha had both chosen the good part, finished fellowshipping with Jesus, Jesus would have had no problem receiving the good, the food, or whatever intended. And they both would have gone to do And they would have both gone to do that. You know, so sometimes, get this child of God, sometimes what you think the Lord wants from you is not what he really wants first. Like mm. you said, God wants fellowship with you. Yeah. God wants you, all of you. Because if he has all of you, then he can do things in your life. Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be oh, also. also. I look at John 11, 1 to 2. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. And then we go to John 12 now, the next chapter, beginning in verse 1. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who, he, who, had, been, who had been dead, dead, whom he had raised from the dead, there they made him a supper, and Martha served. Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and used to take what was put in it. So we see a pattern here. Again. Again. Here was Martha again busy serving and Mary was seizing another moment at his feet again. Seizing another moment, but this time pouring her sacrifice at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Christ. man who raised her brother. Brother from the dead. That was and, the moment. Yeah. And that was all, an opportunity. Yeah. And all Martha could do was serve. was serve. You know, there's a statement here I want to read. Your treasures willingly given and not your busy schedule are a greater guarantee of your heart commitment. That's why that statement that Jesus made, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So this shows us the heart of Mary. It also shows us the heart of Martha. And Mary was ready to part with what she had because she had been at his feet. And she was, knew that place. She knew that place. Oh, she was very intimate in that place. 
That's a separate message. That's a separate message. <laughs> Let's not go on there. Its, on its own. So the Lord wants you to be consumed by what consumes him. Wow. And one thing that can help you is, you see, money is very important. And when Christians get religious about money, they talk all kinds of things. But the Bible says it's where your treasure is, there your heart. So Christians make decisions based on money. On, on money, very, every single moment. Ex, ex, there's nothing where you, you live, who you marry, right, which job you take, where right, you put your church. Right. Money-based carnal thinking. But yes. when you want to get revelation of money, yes. some of them get res exactly. resistance. Yeah. And so we say here, tra trace sometimes trace your spending pattern, and you will really see where your heart is Good and word. what you are consumed by. Yeah. Trace your spending pattern. Yeah. And there is just something about you giving your treasures that is, I believe, probably a, of higher importance to God from your heart, willingly, than running about like a, a bumblebee. Because between Martha and Mary, we see the one who's, who had that greater value mm. for the Lord, and it was And the one Mary. who got Jesus' and attention. Won, amen. Amen. She did. Amen. She did. Amen. She did. Amen. Let's look at another example quickly yes. of two men who almost missed an opportunity also of a lifetime. You see, these things happen. That we're seeing through the scriptures how mm. these, we said life is made up of moments. This is one moment. Yeah. Another moment is coming. Another mm. moment. And the question is, do you recognize? Do you ignore? Mm. Do you ignite? Mm. Do you sustain? Mm. It's good. When the opposition comes, do you go through? That's good. Do you learn any lessons mm. from it? That's the whole idea of God always having moments for you. So these two men, let's look at the story. Luke 24, and I'm going to be reading from the message translation. It's not a translation I normally read for many reasons, but I'll read it this time. <laughs> from verse 13. That same day, two of them were walking to the village emails, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all these things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognize who he was. He asked, what's this recognize means they ought to have? What's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there long-faced, like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happening, what's happened during the last few days? He said, what has happened? Interesting, like he didn't know. Like he wasn't the one that caused everything. <laughs> what has happened? They said, the things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, he was a man of God, a prophet, a dy dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and all the people. Then a high priest and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death, and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since it happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Hmm. Early this morning they were at the tomb, and they couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty, just as the woman said, but they didn't see Jesus. Mm. Then he said to them, so thick-headed, so slow-hearted, this was kind, <laughs> Pastor Jesus, <laughs> so slow-hearted, why can't you simply believe all the prophets said? Don't you see that these things had to happen? that the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into his glory. Then he started at the beginning with the books of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed. He acted as if he were going on, but they pressed him, stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening, the day is done. So he went in with them. And here is what happened. He sat down at the table with them, taking the bread he blessed and broke and gave it to them. At that moment, open-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognized him. Then he disappeared. This is a long text. We've almost run out of time. So I'm sure the next, next episode we'll go into this fully. Mm. We're going to see how these disciples almost missed their moment. And it took a trigger from Jesus for them to, you know, to get it. But let me just say the very first thing, because there's some things we're going to see that 
made it very insensitive of them and very ironic that they, they, <coughs> that they, they, they didn't know that it was Jesus. They were knowledgeable people. They knew all that was going on. They had all the gist, they had all the news. Are you not aware of what's going on? Are you not aware of this and what's that? He says, look, this is what's going on all over the place. But then Jesus came, so I can put it this way, they knew the news, but they didn't know the real news. They didn't know the good news. And we could do all the news going on in the body of Christ, know about CNN and everything, but we don't know what's going on. And I'm out of time. So what we're going to do is, what we're going to do is, we'll pick up from this in the next episode and get really into the story of Emmaus and know exactly what happened to these men. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you. I wish we had more time. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, I'm Pastor Nkechi Eme, and today is a special day. Not only is it a bright, sunny day, it's a day that we've set aside to, you know, make a special invitation to you about partnership with Fresh Dew. This is something I'm doing for the very first time after 21 years of ministry, to make a personal invitation to you to join us in partnership with Fresh Dew. And you know, I, I start thinking, what's the best way to explain the concept of partnership there's so many scriptures I could use from the Word of God, but I believe the Holy Spirit gave me a very simple illustration. This is a jigsaw puzzle, and it all comes together. Jigsawing is something we did a lot with my kids growing up. And it all comes together, you know, to make one big piece. And this is the best way to describe partnership. For everybody who's a partner, this could be who you are. Now, one thing we found out jigsaw puzzling is one of the most frustrating things in you know, making a jigsaw puzzle is when one of the pieces is missing and you all get together as a family and you begin to you know, follow the map and try to get the jigsaw together. And once one piece is missing, it's just never really fully complete. That's how important partnership is. That's how important you are as a partner to Fresh Tea. That's how important you will be to Fresh Tea when you join us in partnership. So every single piece is important. Every single member is important. And together we complete the vision and we can really take this word of God undiluted to the ends of the earth just the way God expects us to. If you look at the definition of the word partner, it simply means a sharer, an associate with another in business, one who plays the same role with another in, the game, in a game. It's very important to you know, use the expression same role. And I'll just share this scripture with you and I'll, I'll talk to you some other days about partnership, but this scripture in 1 Samuel 30, something David said really drives home the importance of partnership together. He says, and I'll just read from the ERV version very quickly. David answered, after some people said some things, you can read the context. David answered, no, my brothers, don't be selfish with what the Lord has given us. He has kept us safe and helped us defeat the enemy. Do you think anyone will listen to you when you talk like this? We share and share alike, those who go to battle and those who guard equipment. That was another translation. The ERV says, the share will be the same for the man who stayed with the supplies and for the man who went to battle. Everyone will share alike. David made this order and rule for Israel, and this rule continues to this day. So I invite you to join us in partnership. When you go on the website, freshg.tv, there's their links that will show you how you can join us and how you can make monthly contributions or whatever you're led to do to be part of what God is doing in this new day in Fresh Dew. And the, the, the rule or the principle remains the same. For us who go out into the battle, who are out here shooting, speaking the word of God, and for you who support us with your prayers and your financial contributions, we share and share alike. And we're all part of this beautiful puzzle that comes together to form the vision of Fresh Tea. Amen. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today?
to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 37 37 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 37 37 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life.